Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about traveling in your RV with your dogs. Like these two right here. Come here Monty. Come on, mine's up. Hey, where are you going? Come here. Come here. Yes, guess they don't want to travel with us. <laughs> In this video, we're going to talk about traveling in your RV with your pets, with your dogs. And as you can see, we have two dogs. Their names are Zephyr and Monty. And we've traveled all over the country with these two guys, and we've picked up a few tips and tricks that we'd like to pass on with you to you and share in this video. One of the things that we are strong advocates are is these harnesses. And I don't know if you I think you can see it here on Monty. These guys have these harnesses on, and we use these when we travel to um, make sure that they're secured in our, our truck so that they don't accidentally run out of the truck when we stop someplace and possibly run into traffic or whatever. But we also, they also are, have reflective strips on them that are very helpful in making sure that you can see our dogs, especially at night when you have a black dog like Monty. He tends to just disappear at night and you cannot find him. So having this reflective strip right here is very useful. You can use a flashlight and if he gets loose, you can at least keep track of him and not lose him, which we find is very helpful. Right. They don't get out too many times. I think, especially Monty, um, if he does get out, he tends not to respond to your commands to come here. Right, he gets. He tends to get afraid, and so if you chase after him, he's afraid that he's in trouble or whatever, and will run. So that's where having this is helpful, and then you know makes it easier for us to keep track of him and get him back safely without him getting into any type of trouble. Because this has happened to us one time at night where we chased him around a campground, and he had this harness on, and that saved it from being, from being a real bad situation because we would have just totally lost track of where he was. Alright guys, wanna go in the trailer? Come on. Come on. Come on, Monty. Or is that Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on Monty. Come on. Good. So there's some things we made some notes here what we wanted to talk about. And so one of the things you know that we uh, wanted to talk about would be using a harness to secure your pet inside uh, your vehicle. We showed you the harnesses and ours have reflectors on them. We attach them to leashes that are attached to the seat of the front seats of the truck so that they are secured and they can't accidentally jump out when we open up a door. And this is also a, a safety feature. If you were ever to get into an accident while traveling and you were hurt and first responders had to come and help you, you want to make sure that your dogs are secured and safe so that these first responders can get to you easily and safely. Um, so that's one of the things we do with our, we, give, we put them on a leash, the leash is about three feet long, so it gives them full access to the back of the truck. They can't get into the front of the truck where we're sitting and, and riding, except for up on the center console between us, but they can't come up into the seats or anything like that, so they can't disturb us when we're driving. We also want to make, you also want to make sure that you have a source of water available for your dogs, and we use a no, non-spill water bowl in our truck that um, we keep on the floor and we can keep it full of water. So this is the water bowl that we use for our dogs. As you can see it has a lid on it with a smaller hole and that allows the water not to spill out while you're traveling so it can slosh back and forth and not splash out. We also carry additional water bottles with us. Usually these are full and we keep them in the doors and so that we've got something to refill the water bowl during the day as we drive. These are the leashes that we talked about and these are attached to the driver's seat and they allow the dogs to move around the back of the truck easily but at the same time if the door became open you know if we were getting out or something and they can't just charge out and run off at a rest area or if we were in an accident or something 
the dogs are always secured and it does prevent them from jumping into the front of the vehicle so that they you know stay back here where it's safer for them another point uh, regarding your safety in the truck if you should ever get into an accident especially a front end accident it prevents them from flying forward right so having them secured you don't want you don't want your your poor dog to be flying through the windshield one of the things too that we've done is you want to make sure your dogs over, don't overheat. You've all seen the, the warnings about you know how hot it gets in a vehicle. Um, and a day like today, as you can see, we're quite warm here right. standing here. In a very short period. Right. And so one of the things that we do is if we have to leave the dogs in the vehicle, you know, like we stop you know, on, a, on a travel day, we're going to go get something to eat, and we're going to have to leave them in the parking lot because they, they're not welcome into the restaurant. We will turn on. We'll leave the truck running and we we'll leave the air conditioning running in the truck. And our truck allows us to do that and lock it and take the key with us because we have push button start. And so we can lock it and, and lock the doors on the vehicle. The dogs can stay in there, they've got the air conditioning running and they're nice and comfortable. Now one thing you need to make sure that you do is you wanna make sure that your vehicle does not have an automatic shut off. Um, some vehicles do that after 15 minutes or 10 minutes or so, they will automatically shut the vehicle off if it's just idling. And ours that does happen to have that, and you can go into the um, settings on the vehicle and disable that so that that doesn't happen. And that way the vehicle will run for, for a half hour or an hour if you're in a restaurant and make sure that your dogs are comfortable. Okay, so in our truck, we can start the truck up and have it running and then lock the truck up with the air conditioning and the dogs inside and so that they're comfortable. So let me show you. So now the truck is running, I will get out. And you can see I have the keys with me. Our truck always butt beeps if the keys aren't in it. But I can come over here, lock the truck with the motor running, and the dogs will be comfortable inside there with the air conditioning running while we're in a restaurant eating. Now the one thing you need to make sure of, if your ve some vehicles have the program in there that they will only run for a few minutes and then they will shut off if they're just at idle. And so you want to make sure that your vehicle doesn't have that set up. So into settings, advanced settings, vehicle, auto engine off. You want to make sure that is unchecked. And that will make that will allow your engine to continue to run and at an idle while the vehicle is locked up and it won't shut off automatically. So the next thing we want to talk about is leaving your dogs in your RV. Um, so one of the things that we typically do, if we know we're going to go some, we're going to be staying someplace, and it's possible that we'll be leaving the dogs in the trailer during the day as we go out and explore, and it may be some place that the dogs aren't. Uh, welcome. Um, we will make sure that we are in a campground that has electricity so that we can run the air conditioning in the trailer and they can be comfortable. Um, so you want to make sure that you know when you find a campground you find one that has electrical hookups at least. Um, you also want to make sure you have a backup plan so that if the power does go off um, you have a way to make sure that the dogs will continue to stay comfortable. And we've got a couple different things that we do on that. Um, one of them is we have fantastic fans in the ceiling of the trailer and I will always leave those vents open and I will set the fan so that if the air conditioner shuts off those fans immediately kick on so that if the temperature goes up a little bit beyond what the air conditioner is set at the fans will turn on and it will start drawing air through the trailer and help keep it cool so we have uh, a vent in the front and a vent in the back so we typically will get the airflow going through that way. We'll have the fan, both fans open, and maybe only one fan running, so it pulls air through. If you only got one um, fantastic fan, and you may want to open up another vent or another window or something, so you do have some airflow. You also want to have some type of remote monitoring um, of your pets while you're in your trailer. And so we have um, an inside the trailer that we can monitor from our cell phone and so we can watch the dogs and make sure that they're okay that way. Uh, we can also listen to them and make sure that they're not barking or upset about anything. 
and we also have a temperature uh, monitor in there and I'll show you that. Um, that is also remote control that I can read it through my cell phone. Both of these um, remote systems, or they require you to have Wi-Fi so you could use it through a campground Wi-Fi or you can have your own Wi-Fi plan with your trailer but they don't require any uh, monthly service so you can easily just have this and you know once you pay the cost of buying these things and they're not that expensive um, you can use them indefinitely so you don't have to worry about having to continue with a monthly fee for that. We will show you how we set the trailer up when we leave the dogs and so one of the things that for us you know it depends everybody knows their dogs differently and it, one of the things for us is you know we want to make sure that the dogs are you know safe and that they don't ruin anything in the trailer while we're away and so we block off the couch so they can't get on the couch we should close the doors in the back of the trailer so that they can't go into the beds and we move the cushions from the dinette actually to allow them to get up on the dinette and look out the windows because we know they want to look out the windows and they'll find a way to climb up on the couch or get in the back or whatever and look out the windows and so it's really it's it's more to protect the trailer than it is anything with protecting the dogs but it is something that we do to make sure that they're safe. Right. You also want to have your contact information with the campground so if something happens while you're gone um, you know, they can contact you and let you know. We've had a campground call us because our dogs were barking one time. To, they wanted to make sure everything was okay. Um, you can also share that with a neighbor or somebody else. And, and our neighbor's dogs are barking. Right. <laughs> and you could, you know, possibly make arrangements with a neighbor to check in on your pets if you're comfortable with that. One of the things you want to make sure when you're traveling is that you find campgrounds that are pet friendly. And most of them are. We haven't run into too many that weren't. But you want to maybe check that before you make your reservation. Right. And so one of the ways that you can do that is you can go to campgroundreview.com. Um, it's a website that we've talked about before that is kind of a user's source uh, reviews. And down there they will check off whether the campground is um, pet friendly or not. You also may want to check the campground's own website because I have seen campgrounds that are pet friendly but they exclude certain breeds and so you want to make sure that you don't run into that situation. Um, you also want to look for other amenities like a dog park. These guys love a dog park and love to be able to get in there and run around even if it's just the two of them. Right. Yeah, they really enjoy the dog parks. Yep. You want to make sure that you control your pets, that they're always on a leash when they're outside your RV, that they're tied and that they're never left unattended outside your RV so that you don't get into a situation where someone comes up and, and they may crawl a park and, yeah. and whatever. Yeah, they want to pet them. Yep. So we always make sure that you when know, we walk them, we always make sure they're on a leash, we have a rope, but if we let the dogs out, we will at least have the door open or we will be out here. Most of the time we're out here with them. And you always want to make sure you, do it, you clean up after your pets and you know, you know, make sure that you do that for everybody so that you know, other people in the campground can enjoy it. Another topic is uh, pet friendly activities. And so you may want to take your pet with you when you're traveling. And so you want to confirm that is there any type of pet restrictions? Is, and some, and for example, a lot of times when you're at the beach, all the beaches have restrictions on when dogs can be on the beach. And that might be a certain time during the day that, that they can't be on the beach, or it might be certain times during the year. Um, some public beaches exclude pets during the summer. Other beaches exclude them during maybe the midpoint of the day and they're only allowed in the morning or the afternoon. So you want to make sure that you're aware of those situations with your pet and so that they have a good time and you don't get into any kind of trouble. Um, you also want to be you know, careful about um, national parks. Most national parks do not allow your pet to be on the trail. And so if you're going on a hiking trail, you know, leave the pet at home. You follow all the procedures we talked about, about making sure that they're safe and comfortable in your RV and, you know, enjoy your hike and come back and enjoy the time with them and find a place that you can take them and walk them where, you know, they'll be welcome. Uh, another thing we've been reading on Facebook and in the paper is about letting your dogs swim in uh, lakes and ponds. Um, we haven't read anything about the ocean. But um, they're warning you that there's this algae out this year that, um, you know, you can find in the lakes and the rivers and the ponds that if your dogs are exposed to it, um, 
they, um, a short time later, they will start to um, display these symptoms. And ultimately, and it only takes a very few minutes, the cells you will kill your dogs or whatever pet that you have. Right, so you want to be careful, um, you know, of the, any type of water that the dogs drink. Don't let them drink out of any river, or pond, or lake. Um, if there's algae in it, you want to make sure that they don't do that. They don't drink it, swim. and that they don't swim in it, because if they're swimming in it, they're going to be drinking it too. So you want to be very careful on that and monitor your pets for that. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video and that we gave you a few tips on traveling with your uh, pets in your RV, um, especially your dogs. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and, and subscribe to our channel. That's right. We post new videos on a weekly basis, and so we'd like you to be get the notification of when we post new videos. And we will see you. See you down the road. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.